Hi guys, today we're going to talk about resin safety. Resin is a great hobby, but there's some important things to know about it before you start. We're going to cover safety and PPE for fumes, liquid resin, and rough sanding. So the first thing to know about resin is that it releases fumes when you're mixing and while it's curing. These fumes are known to be sensitizers, which means that the more you're exposed, the more likely it is that you'll start to have a reaction. And those reactions might also get worse over time. If you do have a reaction, they're usually similar to what most people would think of as an allergic reaction, so you could have things like hives or itchy skin or swelling. The effects can be mild or they can be kind of severe. While some resins may have less toxic ingredients than others, it's important to know that all resins are sensitizers, even if they claim to be safe. If you want to check this, you can look at the safety data sheet for your resin. You'll find that ventilation is always recommended, and usually a respirator is too. This will also let you check for anything else you should know about it, like if it has carcinogenic ingredients or not. To lessen the chance of becoming sensitive to resin, there are some basic precautions we can take when using it. Ventilation is a key thing to consider, so that you don't just have a bunch of fumes hanging around you. If possible, it's best to do resin in a really well ventilated area, like an open garage or outside. If this isn't an option and you're going to be doing it inside, a good way to increase ventilation is to do it somewhere where you can make a cross breeze. You can do this by having windows or doors that are opposite to each other open and this increases the airflow. You can also strategically place fans around to help too. It's best to keep your resin away from any food prep areas like the kitchen so you might want to do it in a spare bedroom or a craft room, even if these have less ventilation. Along with ventilation, the other way to protect yourself is to wear a respirator. A respirator will filter the air before you breathe it in, so that you're protected from the fumes. A respirator isn't the same thing as a dust or medical mask, and using either of these won't protect you. You can use either a half face or full face respirator, and you'll also need organic vapour cartridges that fit on the sides. These will need to be replaced regularly depending on how often you use them and how dense the fumes are where you work. I use epoxy and I work outside so I only tend to replace mine every few months. They'll need to be stored in a ziplock bag or airtight container when they're not being used so that they don't keep filtering when they're not in use. I'd also recommend looking up how to do a respirator seal check so that you know it's fitting properly. Now the last thing we need to consider is what to do about the fumes while the resin cures. Resin will continue to put off fumes while it's curing and it's often not practical to leave it somewhere well ventilated for the whole time. Personally, I like to place my pieces in an airtight plastic box which contains the fumes and then I only open this again outside where it can air out. So steamer or Tupperware containers are both fairly good at being airtight but I also leave the boxes in a room that isn't used very much to be extra careful. It's also really important not to do anything resin based near pets because they're very sensitive to fumes. Okay, so the next thing to know is that touching liquid resin can also be hazardous. There are often chemicals in it that you don't want to get in your system and resin sensitivity can also be triggered by skin contact. To counteract this, it's important to always wear gloves when handling resin until it's fully cured. Nitrile gloves will offer the best protection, but vinyl gloves will do if you can't get these. Resin can eventually seep through gloves, so it's best to avoid purposefully getting resin on them if you can help it. If you're doing messy work or for a long time, it's a good idea to change out your gloves partway through, or some people double gloves for more protection. If you're only going to be using the gloves once, you might want to look up glove donning and doffing to see how to avoid touching them. Otherwise, I personally like to get gloves that are a little bit big for me so that I can take them off easier to reuse a few times. It can also be a good idea to wear safety glasses while working to protect your eyes from accidental resin splashes, as well as wearing something with long sleeves to protect your arms. If you get resin on your skin, the safest way to deal with it is to wipe off what you can and then scrub with a mixture of dish soap and baking soda before rinsing off with water. It's important never to use anything alcohol based to get it off 
because it allows the resin to penetrate deeper into your skin, making it more likely that you'll have a reaction. This includes things like isopropyl alcohol, acetone, hand sanitizer, or vinegar. Resin dust from sanding is widely considered to be the most dangerous part of the process because it can be really irritating to your lungs and eyes. The easiest way to cut down on airborne dust is to wet sand wherever possible. It's best to do any sanding outside or in a garage so that it isn't getting spread around your living spaces. If that's not an option for you, some people make a fully enclosed sanding box with gloves to put your hands through, which contains all of the dust inside. There's also a few different things that you can wear to protect yourself Firstly, either a dust mask or a respirator with particulate filters attached. These are different to the filters used for resin fumes and can come as either an attachment on the outside of the organic vapour cartridges or just as a filter you attach to the mask directly. Next, you'll want some goggles to protect your eyes. It's best to wear either fully sealed ones or ones that are indirectly vented so that the dust doesn't get in. For some people, Resin dust can also become a skin irritant, so gloves can be helpful, but this is more unusual compared to liquid resin. Lastly, it's a good idea to wear something over your normal clothes that you can take off when you finish sanding, so that the dust doesn't get spread around after you've finished. So this has been quite a lot of information to take in, but once you start doing resin, these all become second nature pretty quickly. There are more safety related things to know about resin, so I'll be making another video to cover these, but this should be enough to get you started. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking it, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks so much for watching.